group. And if you stay with me these 10 minutes, I'll explain you a new machine learning algorithm that is able to work over unbalanced data where other algorithms can, and that improves the random forest results that a very famous algorithm. So, well, maybe most of you know this part, but let me start with a very quick introduction about unbalanced data. Unbalanced data is every amount of data where a class predominates over the other one. And again, most people think it's really common in nature. For example, in fraud, we can find millions of transactions, but just a few of them are fraudulent transactions. Well, what's the problem then? When we used to apply machine learning techniques, we used to maximize the accuracy. And imagine the last case. If we have one million of transactions and just 10 of them are fraudulent, if we predict everything as a good transaction, we will obtain a 99% of accuracy and we are not detecting anything. So that's the reason why we should use another metrics more related with the detection probability. And I think it's easier to understand attending these two, two confusion matrix. Both are results of the same problem. Note that we have the same number of ones and zeros in both cases. And my question is, which one is better? Well, obviously the right one has less accuracy than the left one, but which one is better? Well, I think that the answer is it depends on the problem. Why? Because imagine you are working on developing trading systems. I obviously prefer the left one. Why? Because I've made six trades, five of them are winner trades, and just one of them is a loser trade. It's a good ratio. It's true that I've not taken these 10 winner trades, but I'm making a good ratio. And on the other hand, if I'm working on illness detection, I prefer the right one. Why? Because, well, I'm making almost 300 medical exams to detect just 10 ill people, but, but I'm saving five more lives than in the first case, so I don't mind to pay that medical exam if, if I can save five more lives. Okay, so I think the answer is it depends on the problem. Well, we have made a really fast introduction about unbalanced data, and now it's time to talk about the most common practice in this field. Well, most of, most of techniques uh, in unbalanced data are related with the correction of the unbalanced proportion. Okay, maybe creating some new synthetic samples from the, uh, from the minority class, or maybe deleting some samples for the majority class. And why we do this? Because it's very difficult from, for an algorithm to work over that case, and it's easier to stay <coughs> in the other case. And, well, what I propose? I was not good with that techniques because I think you are modifying the data as it appears in nature. And, well, this new algorithm that I propose is, is has the goal to exploit all the data you have as you receive from nature. And well, this new algorithm is an ensemble algorithm, so I think it's easier to understand uh, explaining first random forest. So very quick, how random forest work? Imagine we have a data set, random forest, divide the data set in small pieces in, for example, in three pieces, and trains a tree in each piece, so we will obtain three smart trees that are able to predict a new data point. And when a new point appears, you ask the trees, each one makes its prediction, and after you apply the majority vote to determine which is the final output of random forest. And, okay. 
Now, EM Forest, how it works? Well, the beginning is the same as Random Forest. We split the data set, we train the trees, we obtain the smart trees, and after, what we are going to do is to question that majority votes. Why? Because there are some cases, like trading, when I prefer all the trees saying that it's a winner trade to enter the market, and there are other cases like illness detection, where if just one tree pronosticates that you are ill, I prefer to make you the medical exam. Okay, so how we will question that majority vote? Well, we will take the source data set, the train data set, and we will ask the trees about each point. Okay, and we will save the outputs of the tree of the trees in a new data set where the features are the outputs of the trees and the target is the same as in the source data set because it represents the same data point. Okay? We will continue filling the new data set and when we finish, we will obtain a new data set with, like I said, the outputs of the trees and the same target as in the source data set. See how we have transformed the, the problem and well, what we do now with this new data set that we have created, we will apply a, apply a new machine learning algorithm. But now, well, I've drawn very big, but actually it's easier than the other trees. So this new algorithm uh, has the possibility to work over this data, even if in the source is very extremely unbalanced data. Okay, well, that's just a curiosity. Uh, you have two ways to, to apply this algorithm. One is the, the first we have seen, saving the outputs of the trees. And second one is the aggregated mode. That means add the outputs of the trees. And I guess against, I thought when I've created, the second one looks like works better. Okay, so what we have obtained? Well, we have obtained a better score than Random Forest. Why? Because if the optimum point is the majority vote, you will obtain with this method and with Random Forest. But if it's not, you will obtain with this new method and Random Forest not. Okay? Also, we will obtain more result flexibility. Why? because we can force the trees to stay in trading problem or in illness detection problem. And well, also we have quick learner independence. That means that it's not necessary to use trees. We can use any algorithm that we want to, to apply to this technique. And well, these are the use cases of, the, of this algorithm a real project where we apply this algorithm to predict the propensity of the use of credit card. And well, that's a real project with real money. So if we have applied this algorithm is because it obtains the better score than any other algorithms. And well, also if it has been tested over Kaggle dataset, this to the data set with very, really good results. And well, as conclusions, I hope I've made a new approach to unbalanced data. I hope you like this new algorithm because I know it has really rich results. And well, finally, my idea is to make it open source and I wish that maybe one day it's in in the library. And well, that's all. Thank you very much. And if you want to see the beta code, you can write me to this address and I'll send you.